Hello everyone and welcome back to Microsoft Access 2016 Basics. My name is Steve Bishop and in this video we're going to see how to use subforms along with our many-to-many -many relationships. So let me just set up the scenario for you. We have our phone numbers and we have a good mix of a many-to-many -many relationship between the different phone numbers and the people that are using those phone numbers because we might have one number that belongs to multiple people and multiple people, of course, have different phone numbers. So we have to keep track of the arrangement between people and phone numbers using some sort of table we call a join table or a relationship table, uh, something along those lines. I like to call them a join table, but they're essentially describing the relationship between people and phone numbers. And we need to see how to incorporate this many-to-many -many relationship with a join table in our form. And in order to do that, we're going to use a subform control. So let's take a look. Right now, our people form only displays the first name, last name, date of birth, salary, uh, whether or not they're active, and the person type. And the person type is, of course, a dropdown. Uh, but what about the phone numbers? What about this phone number arrangement? We've got people phone numbers, we've got uh, phone numbers and phone types. So there's a lot going on with phone numbers that we need to somehow capture in this form. And what I first want to do is actually kind of give some sort of visual cue that there is a difference between this part of the form and the other part of the form. So I'm going to add this line here between the top portion and the bottom portion of our form. And you don't have to do that. It's just something I like to visually do sometimes when I kind of want to split up the form into different sections. Okay, so now I want to put the phone numbers and list the phone numbers that belong to each person down below here. Now remember, we're displaying on this form one person at a time, but each person is going to have potentially multiple phone numbers. So we need to come up with some sort of display that's going to show all of those phone numbers. Now we could do something along the lines of just with a list, uh, using one of these list controls, and we will talk about list boxes at another time. But I wanted to show you something a little bit more complex because I think you're ready to do it. So what we're going to do is we're going to create another form. Uh, so I'm going to go to Create Form Design, and this form is just going to show the phone number information. So each phone number at a time. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this text box here, and this is gonna be my phone. I'm not gonna have a label on it. I'm just gonna do the phone number for now. If you wanna add a label, of course you could do that. Uh, I'm gonna make it a little bit wider. And then uh, I'm gonna copy this. And remember that uh, this form is going to show phone data, but the phone data is going to be more than just the phone number. It's also going to be the phone type. So on this form, uh, and actually before I get too far, let's go ahead and link this to, a to, to some sort of data set. So I'm going to change data, uh, record source, and we want this to be phone numbers. Okay, so this is going to show the phone number data. Okay, now this first text box here is going to be linked to the actual phone number and it looks like I also need to add an ID. So let me, oh, actually I don't need to do that because we're gonna be linking this form to another form that already has that primary key listed on it. So we don't need to actually do that. Okay, uh, this unbound here is going to be a dropdown. So I need to convert this. And one of the ways you can do that with a text box is you could just right click on the, uh, on the control and go to change to, and then we're gonna say combo box. So this combo box is going to be filled with the phone type, and this is going to be the phone number. So let's go ahead and set this combo box using what we know about combo boxes and how to fill them up with uh, record data from another table. We can go over here to control source and set this to the phone type ID, and then we can change the row source to our phone types. Okay, now it is of course bound to column one uh, because if we look at our phone types, we can see column one is the ID of the phone type, so that's good. And uh, now I need to change the format of this so that it shows not one but two columns, but we're gonna make the width of that first column, that is the ID, we're gonna make it just zero inches. 
And then that means that the second column is all that's going to fill this combo box. And with that, I can go ahead and shrink this down so that this form just shows those, those two pieces of information. Let's go ahead and save this form. I'm gonna go ahead and call this a phone, uh, phone number form or phone number, yeah, phone number form, phone numbers form, okay. Uh, the other thing I wanna do is I wanna turn this into what we call a continuous form. And that is a form that shows each set of data in some sort of continuous flowing from top to bottom format. And the way you can change that is by going to the default view under format for the form. Notice I'm selecting the form. I can go to the property sheet for the form and change default view from single form to this continuous form. I could also do it as data sheet, but I'm just gonna do it as continuous form instead. Okay, so I've got my continuous form ready to go here. Uh, go ahead and close that. Yes, save the changes. Now I need to put that form inside of this people form somehow. I need to display it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over here to the design and I'm gonna look for a control that is called a subform control. And if I just scroll down here, we can see it looks like this. And if we hover the mouse, it says subform sub report. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. And then I'm just gonna draw a little bit of a box here. And it's gonna give me a little wizard where I can select an existing form to put inside of this subform. I'm gonna go ahead and say, use an existing form. And it's gonna be the phone numbers form. And click next. Now, this is where things get a little bit uh, interesting and you have to follow along. We need to show some sort of link between the people form and the form that we're displaying in the subform. And this gets a little tricky because remember, there is actually another table that is our join table that links the two. So really we don't have a good link between the people that are, the person that is selected on uh, each record of, that we're displaying on the form and the, the table that is displaying the data inside of our phone numbers. There's no direct link. Instead, it goes through this phone, uh, this people underscore phone numbers table. So we need to fix that before we can join these things. So I'm actually gonna cancel out of this wizard, which is good because I just kind of wanted to show you the wizard to see that, that there is kind of a neat little way to link between the two. There's a nice little wizard, but we're gonna do it kind of the harder long way. Okay, I'm just gonna change the label here so we can see phone numbers, or I'll just put the pound sign. Okay, so uh, I do need to bind this form to a subform, but before I do that, I'm gonna go back to my phone numbers form, go back to the design view, and I need to fix the way that this data is linked. All right, so I'm gonna go to the form property sheet and go to data, and instead of just selecting phone numbers, I actually need to base this form off of a query that includes the people underscore phone numbers. So I'm gonna go ahead and select the little ellipsis here. And yes, do I wanna create a query based on the table? Yes, I do. So this is gonna give me the little query designer and I need to add that table. So I'm gonna say uh, show tables and select the, the people underscore phone numbers and add it. And you'll notice that of course, because we set up our relationships and our referential integrity between the tables, we already get the many, the one-to-many relationship that is bound between these two tables. So I'm gonna go ahead and select all of the fields here off both tables and drop them into this query. Okay, so now I've got all of the records for be, that should that uh, are, are joined between the people underscore phone numbers and the phone numbers and if we just run this real quick we can see we get all of that good data in our query so even though our form is only showing these two fields the data that is bound to the form is all of the fields including both the tables people underscore phone numbers and the phone numbers themselves Okay, and then of course our drop down here of phone type ID contains the phone types. So there's a lot of linkage going on here between all the different tables and the form controls and the form itself. But I don't think we've gone beyond your understanding. If you've watched all of the videos up to this point in this series, you should not be lost just yet. 
Okay, so we're back to our people form now, and we need to once again add that subform into this subform control. So let's go ahead and se select the source object, and you'll see that when we click on the drop down, we get all the different forms. We could do tables and queries too, but I'm going to go ahead and select the phone numbers form. And now you'll notice that there is under the data tab of this, we see link master fields, link child fields. So if I click on this and click on the ellipsis, parts of the link with missing pair fields will be ignored. Okay, that's fine. Uh, we need to fix so that the master field and the child field matches. So that the master field, and what this means is the field that is on my people form, what is the field on this form that matches the field on my child form? So that when I have something selected, whatever the ID is of the person that's being displayed, then how does that relate to the other form? How does that relate to the data on the other form? So we're gonna click on the drop down, and we'll see that it's going to be the ID of the person we need to link, uh, to, that we wanna link as the master field. The child field will be the phone, uh, is, is actually going to be the person type ID, which there it is, person ID, it's this one right here. And that again comes from the people underscore phone numbers table, not the phone types, or uh, not the phone numbers table. So when we click okay on this, and now we take a look at the view, you'll notice that our form down here, our little uh, sub form control, shows that phone numbers form inside of it as a continuous form, one, uh, one record at a time in this flow you know, downwards, right? In this kind of data sheet view, if you will. And this is really handy. This is now something that can, we, we can work off. And if I switch between the records on my people form, you'll notice that the table down here is going to uh, show just the related information to that person that's being displayed. So if we go through the records here, we see Denise does have the work number. And, and so now we have this really good link between these two forms, between this people form and the phone numbers form. Now, one last thing I do want to point out is entering data. So if I go in here and I'm going to select uh, 656, uh, 566, yeah, well, you know what I'm doing here. I'm just putting in some fake numbers. And when I click on tab, I'm going to get this error here. And it says, you cannot add or change a record because a related record is required in table phone types. I want you to think, I'm just going to let you think for a moment, and you may want to pause the video here just to think about this. Why do you suppose that we're getting this little uh, warning here? You cannot add or change a record because a related record is required in table phone types. All right, so if you... Uh, didn't want to pause the video or you're, you did pause it and you're ready to, to come up with the answer, you think you have the answer. The reason is because in our control here, this drop down, this is related to our home, work, cell, and fax. This is where we were talking about the phone types table. There has to be some sort of link between the phone number and the phone types table. And the reason for that is because we cannot have a null value when we're selecting some sort of, of uh, phone type in our phone numbers table. Let me show you what I mean. If I go to the design view, we have phone type ID. And right now its default value is zero. So whenever we enter in a new record into phone numbers, the default value it wants to set for that phone type ID is zero. But if we look at our phone types table, there is no zero. So there's a problem with the data. The data does not have the appropriate integrity. So what I'm going to do to fix this warning is I'm going to change the default value from a zero to, um, let's change it to one. Oops, I don't think it quite saved. Oh, because I'm not, let me do this again. It's because I have this form open, so I can't make the changes. Yes, yes, yes. I understand. Okay, <laughs> let's try that again. So we're going to go to the phone, uh, phone numbers, design view, the phone type ID. Right now, its default value is zero. I want to change this to a one. 
which is going to make it so that by default, any new record entry that's added to phone numbers, it will have the phone type of one, which is just home number, okay? And now, save those changes to it. If I go back to my people form table, now when I try to enter in a number, see, did I enter the right number of digits? No, I did not. All right. Now, when I tab over here, you'll notice it automatically populates that with the default value of home, and I no longer receive the warning. So that's just something to be uh, careful of, something to know about in case you run into that issue. So there you go. That is how you can link multiple forms based upon multiple tables using a many-to-many -many table relationship with a join table, that's our people phone numbers table, and using that joining between the data uh, on our people form with the phone numbers that correlate to that person with a many-to-many -many relationship. I'd like to thank these members for joining the channel. Without your contributions, this channel would not be possible. Thank you. Yeah.